In today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, I'll be showcasing my work on two images by Dave Karp using Sean Bagshaw's Luminosity Masterclass as inspiration. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. The other night, I was watching some training videos from Sean Bagshaw that I purchased from Tony Kuyper's web store. After watching two of those videos, I found some images that were sent to me from viewers, and these are from Dave Karp. This first image, as you see right now in Lightroom, this is the raw file, unedited right now. It was shot at sunrise, and it was exposed, it looks like, for the sky. But the foreground is really dark, and the first technique will really showcase how to take care of an issue like this, where my typical workflow doesn't work so well in Photoshop because of the really dark foreground. We can work on the foreground in the raw format, which will be a much better technique for processing an image like this, and I'll show you how we do that. And then the second image of this really cool willow tree that Dave calls Old Man Willow. Can you see the old man in the tree? We're gonna bring out texture in this bark. Now these are not full edits. The first image is going to be a starting point for an actual edit. And if you want to see that full edit after I'm done showing you the introduction part, let me know in the comments section below and I could do that full edit on a future TK Friday video. So if enough of you tell me you want me to do that, I will do that on a future episode. But this image, like I said, we're gonna use a special technique to bring out the texture in this bark. So that'll be the second example. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link, it'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. If you're interested in the Luminosity Mask Masterclass where I base these two edits off of, you could purchase it from Tony Kuiper's web store. It's $55. You can use my promo code DK15 and save 15% off of it. I highly recommend it to you. By the way, if you're an Apple user, you can use the iCloud Drive to store your videos, your training videos, and then you can stream those videos on any of your Apple products, which is kind of a nice thing. And I just wanted to point that out. I know everybody doesn't use Apple, but if you do, you could take advantage of streaming your training videos. Now, of course, that would depend on how much space you have in your iCloud, but you can purchase more space and it's really not all that expensive. So you can check into that. I just wanted to point that out too. All right, now let's see how we can process this image. This is the original RAW file. And this is what it looks like after I made some edits on it. So here's my edits. I warmed it up a little bit, uh, adjusted the exposure, contrast, the highlights. I pulled back the highlights, pulled back the shadows a little bit, and opened up the whites just slightly. That was about it. Oh, I gave it a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation as well. But I'm only looking at this sky right here, not the foreground, because we're going to tackle that next. I also want to point out under detail, I didn't use any sharpening. I didn't use any luminance noise reduction. I use the default setting of 25 for the color noise reduction. I always do that. I'll be doing denoising later with Topaz Photo AI, and I'll show you how I do that. And also under lens corrections, I have removed chromatic aberrations checked on and enable profile corrections checked on. Now all we need to do is right click on the image and go to edit in. And you wanna make sure you open as a smart object in Photoshop, that's very important. So click that and we'll launch Photoshop. And now in a second or two, here we are in Photoshop. Here is our smart object for the sky. Now we need to copy this. And to do that, you wanna click on this button right here on the combo or this button on the CX panel. And what that does is it copies your smart object. So it lets us readjust the raw file, but it will not change the first layer where the sky has been adjusted already. Now we need to adjust the foreground. So double click on this top layer. That's gonna open up Adobe Camera Raw. And now we can adjust 
just for the foreground. Also, by the way, I have PDF notes for you as well as the images that you can download. Go into the description below this video and you're going to find a Dropbox link for the PDF notes and the images. First thing I want to do is warm up the foreground a little bit and I think somewhere right around here should be good. That just warms it up a little bit. Maybe I'll just back it off a little bit. And now I just want to open up the exposure just to right about right there. Contrast. I'm going to give it a little bit more contrast right about there. I'm going to pull my highlights back some more to maybe right around here, minus 95. Now we're going to really open up those shadows. We're going to open them up to somewhere right about here, 81. And now we can see we're not worried about this sky up here because remember, we have a separate layer that deals with the sky. We'll be making a luminosity mask to make this all fit together. I'm just going to give it a little clarity bump, not much, just like here, like a plus six. It looks a bit oversaturated, so I'll start by pulling the vibrance back. I think I'll pull it back to right about here, and that is a six right there. And let's pull back the saturation it's too strong, I think. I'm going to take it back to maybe right there. I think that looks a little better. Now, we can always come back in. It's a smart object and readjust things as needed. And now all we need to do is click OK. And now we have it. So here's our next step. We need to shut this layer off. So make sure you shut that off. It's important because we want to base our mask off of the first layer that's adjusted for the sky. Now let's create a luminosity mask so we can bring this whole image together here. So we'll come up and click on the luminosity mask button and we're going to go with a darks three. I'll show you the different darks. Here's a darks one. I'm looking for a lot of separation between that sky and foreground. Here's a darks two and here's a darks three. And you could try these different channels out if you want to, but I found that RGB in this case worked out really well. And now we need to make a levels adjustment to refine this, so click on this levels button, and now we're gonna refine it. I wanna tighten up this sky, I want it to go dark, so we're gonna take the shadow slider, and I'm gonna start to drag it to the right, to right about here, like a 33. Next, I'll grab this highlight slider, and I'll start to drag it to the left. Now, watch this number right here, this is for the highlights. I'm going to take it over to like right about here, 137. And now we're going to go with the midtones and lighten those up a little bit. So I'm going to drag it to the left and we're going to drag it over to like right about here, 1.47. And I think we have a good mask right here. Now the sky will be protected here. We're only going to be affecting the foreground. Now we need to output this. So click on this button right here. This will output your mask to the layer that we were on, which was the foreground smart object layer. So click this. And we don't see a change here, right? Because the layer is still off. Remember, we had to shut that off so we could base the mask off of the sky smart object. So now let's turn it on. And now we can see there we go. Now, it doesn't look quite right yet, and we're not done yet. I don't like the water right in this area here, and I'm going to fix that by painting on the mask. So click on the mask to make it active. Grab a white brush. My opacity is at 100%. My flow is at 5%. To get your flow to 5%, hold down your shift key all the while holding your 0 and 5 key all at the same time, and that'll get you 5%. That's a shortcut. What I want you to notice is the light areas of these waves. They look kind of blue, and they don't look right. If I disable this mask by clicking on this X, you can see there's some nice white in here. So I want to reveal some of that through. So let's enable the mask again by clicking on the X again. And with that 5% opacity, all I want to do is paint over these areas right here and just reveal that white back in on those waves, just like that. Okay, so now I think that looks a little better. And now for the next step, what I wanna do is put this into a group, into a black group, and that will hide everything. And then we're gonna paint the adjustment on just the way we would like it so we can kind of finesse it a little bit, if that makes sense. To put this layer in a group with a black mask, make sure it's active and click on this button on the combo, this button on the CX panel, the left side. You gotta make sure it's the left side. The right side gives you a white mask, the left side gives you a black mask. So when you click this, it puts that layer in a group and now we don't see our adjustment, but now we're gonna paint it on. Now, I'm gonna use a white brush at that same 5% flow and Basically, what I'm going to do is start painting that adjustment on. Remember, I have a controlling mask on that smart object that's protecting. Remember, with that flow, we can just keep painting. The more you wipe over an area, the stronger the effect will get. 
make sure I get these distant mountains back in here. We're going to paint up in here. And don't forget, you have the flow, so it'll let you build certain areas up stronger. If you give it more paint, it'll get stronger. So we don't have to make all these areas equal. We can really adjust it and just finesse this adjustment in and get it just the way you like. I may even drop my flow down to like 1%. So that holds your shift key down, holds your zero key down, and your one key down all at the same time. And then I'm just going to add just a little, this will give me a little bit more control. Maybe make this a little bit lighter. I'm going to start to paint over this water as well. With that 1% gives me a lot of control. And just bring as much of that in as I want. And I think that looks pretty good. I might lighten this area up a little bit and maybe in here a little bit. Maybe these trees lighten them up a little bit. Make sure I got the top of these trees in here. And I think that looks pretty good. So here is the before and here is after. Now, if we go ahead and disable this mask, look at the difference here. Here it is without the mask. It looks like that. And here it is with the mask. See, I got a lot more control in there. And then if I look here, I think I need to make this area right here just a little bit lighter coming off of here. Now, at any time, you can double click on these layers. For instance, if I double click on this foreground smart object, I can go in here. And maybe say, I want to lighten up that exposure a little bit more. So let me just lighten that exposure just a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit more contrast. Maybe make it slightly warmer and click OK. And that smart object will update. And you see we can change it. And maybe I want to make the sky a little darker so I can double click on the sky smart object. And let's just darken up that sky just a little bit. Not much. Maybe right there and click OK. So you could go back and retweak things as you want. And that is basically it. Now, if I zoom way into this image, I'm going to click this plus a few times here. And let's take a look. I might have to go in even more here. Let's keep zooming in. And you can see there's a little bit of noise in here. It's really not that bad, but I can get rid of it with Topaz Photo AI. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you want to see me do a full edit on this image, I will give you this file already processed with the noise reduction already on it. In other words, it won't have noise. It'll be ready to start a full edit. If you want to see a full edit, again, let me know in the comments section below. Just say, yeah, Dave, do a full edit on this image. If you click this button on the CX or this button on the combo panel, it'll go back to fit inside of the window here in Photoshop. Now we're going to launch Topaz Photo AI. And you'll notice I'm on the first layer, but you remember from my hidden features video, if you hold your command or control key down, I want to stamp all these layers together and click on this button while you're holding your command or control key down. That'll bring that to the top here a fully stamped layer because I want to denoise this layer with all the edits already baked in. Now I can hear some of you out there, you're asking yourself, hey Dave, why didn't you denoise this when it was in the raw format? You know what I did and I did not like the result I got with Topaz Photo AI. I also tried it with Denoise AI and I did not like my results. That's one of the reasons I don't denoise or sharpen images that often in the raw format, even though that's what Topaz say you should do. I'm just going to use my Topaz Photo AI action right here. So I'll click on this and that'll open up Topaz Photo AI and I'll do a real quick denoising. These are the autopilot settings. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to 200%. And I'm going to go right over here where you can really see this noise over here. I'm not going to do any sharpening. I'm going to shut the sharpening off. I'm just going to use noise reduction. So I'm going to turn on the noise reduction. It's looking pretty good so far. This is uh, strength 22, detail at 31. I'm going to bump up the strength to like 27, I think. Just give it a little bit more noise reduction. And I also think I'll pull up the detail a little bit to like right here, 34. Here's the before and here's the after. Now that's all I really want to do. But I want you to notice something else when you're using Topaz Denoise AI. Look at these trees right here. I'm going to left click and hold down. You can see there's a little bit of chromatic aberration in there that Lightroom didn't get out. But you can see that Topaz Photo AI did get rid of that uh, chromatic aberration, which is a really nice feature to Topaz Photo AI. And now all I need to do is click Save to Adobe Photoshop, and it will be denoised. Again, if you want to see a full edit, what I'll do is I'll just flatten this image. In fact, right now, I'm just going to click on Flatten. And this is the file that you're going to get, my process with the flattened image. And then 
If you want to see that full edit, I'll start from this point right here. And now I have one final example for you. This is another image by Dave Karp, and he calls this one Old Man Willow. So we're going to bring some texture out here. And Sean calls this sculpting light with levels and curves. And this is really easy to do. You could either use a curves adjustment or a levels adjustment. I'm going to use a levels adjustment just because it's a little easier to understand. So let me click on the levels adjustment. And what we're going to do is... We're going to lighten up the light areas and darken down the darker shadow areas. And to do that, we're going to take this highlight slider and we're going to move it to the left. And we're going to move it over here right to around 180, somewhere right around in there. See how all the light areas get lighter? And now we're going to darken the darker areas by taking this midtone slider and dragging it to the right. And we're going to drag it over to right around here, like 65. And see how the darker areas got darker? The lighter areas got lighter and now we've blown out all these highlights up in here but we can take care of that no problem and to do that what we're going to do is get a mask for protection so we're going to come up to the luminosity masks and kind of like my opening move and all my edits where i do balance and contrast we're going to use a midtones 3 mask so click on mids 3 and then we're going to output this to a black mask painting with a white brush through a selection and we're going to paint this on so let's click this button right here to do that. And you can see we have a black mask, a selection, and we have a white brush. Now I'm gonna use a flow of about uh, 25%. I'm just gonna drag this flow slider over here to right around 25%. And what we're gonna do, this is a nice soft edge brush. And what we'll do is just kind of paint this on using that flow to help us. Lighter areas will get lighter and darker areas will get darker as I paint. And we'll just paint all the areas that we want to bring out these textures. So just keep painting away. And like I said, this is pretty easy and pretty fast. We can even make our brush a little bit larger and paint some of these grassy areas down in here if we'd like to. And then we can go ahead and change things a little bit, but let me get up in here. And we have that nice Midtones 3 protecting us from clipping highlights and shadows, which is a kind of a nice little feature there. Now let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after, but you see that nice texture we brought out? Now, if we've overshot some areas, all we need to do is deselect our selection. So click this button on the combo panel or this button on the CX panel. And that gets rid of our selection. And now change to a black brush. So click on your black brush. And now we could go ahead and let me lower my opacity. I'm going to hold my shift key down and type 1. And that will give me 10% opacity. Or flow, I should say. And now I could come down here. You know, if I went a little too strong, I can take some of this off here, down in here. May have went a little too strong here, so I'll just back that off a little bit. If I got out into the highlights here, I can kind of erase some of those highlighted areas out, like up in here. And we have no selection now, so we can just kind of just fix it up, just like that. Now, here is the before, and here is the after. So just like that, it's pretty simple and easy to do, but that was just a really quick one. But that's called Sculpting Light with Levels and Curves. And by the way, you can always come back to your levels adjustment and retweak it a little bit. You may want the darks to be a little bit darker, maybe the lights to be a little bit lighter, or not as much, depending what you want. Here's the before and here's the after, so you can go back and retweak things. But there you go. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. Now, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!